All right, so we are gonna talk about sebaceous neoplasms here really quick. So you can see this shape biopsy here that has pretty well-defined sebaceous lobules. It's a pretty small lesion. It's probably on the order of uh, two millimeters total in size. As you go in and kind of interrogate these sebaceous lobules, you'll see that they're pretty well differentiated sebacytes here. Nothing um, out of the ordinary. It just looks like mildly enlarged lobules. Um, and in a different plane of section, they would probably connect pretty clearly to the overlying epidermis here and be associated with a uh, hair follicle in many, many cases, but not always. Um, so you will often just see a shave biopsy with well differentiated sebocytes and organized lobules and um, Typically, the rollout will either be sebaceous hyperplasia or basal cell carcinoma. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you'll get other interesting rollouts, but this is nothing other than sebaceous hyperplasia here. Now, take a mental screenshot of this, because as we move on to the next lesion, you'll see in contrast, this is a much larger lesion. There's a lot more presence of sebaceous lobules. And you'll notice that there's this kind of pink to purple thicker rim to the outer part of the lobule. But most of the lobule is still composed of well differentiated sebaceous cells or sebocytes. When you start to get this change, this is more reflective of a sebaceous adenoma. So what you have are still well organized lobules. Most of them are well differentiated sebocytes, but you have more of a um, precursor cell component on the edge. And um, usually these lesions are larger clinically as well as on the slide. So if you see something that looks a lot more prominent than what you often see for a sebaceous hyperplasia, and you have well-differentiated sebocytes with a rim of pinkish to purple um, on low power uh, color, and then you go into higher power and you see this kind of more basophilic staining population on the outside, it's consistent with the sebaceous adenoma. Now, in reality, if you just get a small sample, um, it can be pretty tricky to tell the difference between a sebaceous hyperplasia and a sebaceous adenoma. So sometimes you might be descriptive in the diagnosis and say that it's well-differentiated sebaceous neoplasm and what you favor and why you favor it. Um, <clears throat> nevertheless, though, these are benign. Again, I wanted to show you another example of a sebaceous adenoma. You can see well-formed lobules. And on the outer rim of those lobules, you'll notice that thicker blue compared to a sebaceous hyperplasia here where you just mainly have that whitish um, sebaceous, uh, well-differentiated sebocyte presence. So if you go back to that example of the sebaceous adenoma here, um, again, you can see how if you just got a piece of this, it'd be tricky to say sebaceous hyperplasia versus adenoma. This is a little bit more involved. Um, so this one was called a sebaceous adenoma, but it's a little bit more borderline, and I admit that it could be confusing. Um, so then you'll get these other more clear examples of sebaceous adenoma where you've got very thick um, purple to pink rim around the lobules that corresponds to that more precursor sebocyte population. You still have most of the lobule being composed of well-differentiated sebocytes. So this again fits the definition of a sebaceous adenoma. Um, it, it's well circumscribed. Um, it's, it seems to be a single lesion clinically. If you go on higher power and look for mitotic figures, you're not really gonna find them easily. The cells are pretty bland here. Um, so taking all of that into account, the best diagnosis is sebaceous adenoma. Now, what if you had something that was composed of well-differentiated sebocytes, but most of the population of the, of the cells were these blue kind of precursor cells? What, what would that translate into? So here's the next specimen, and this is actually a sebacioma. So you can find well-differentiated sebocytes here in the sebacioma. So here, no trouble telling that that's a sebocyte with that vacuole, vacuolized cytoplasm, the kind of a mulberry appearance in a way that you might see in a hibernoma. Um, but this is a sebocyte population, but it's in and amongst these more precursor cells um, that you see these types of cells at the rim of the sebaceous adenoma, but now they're taking over most of the neoplasm. So this 
um, when it's more than 50%, you start to get into the definition of a sebacioma. Um, now, in real life, sebaceomas and sebaceous carcinomas are difficult to tell apart, especially with the sample. So you really got to interrogate the lesion, make sure that you're not finding significant mitotic figures, um, that these are just a bland precursor sebocyte population in the presence of scattered normal sebocytes. If you um, interrogate this and you find that that's really um, within the realm of well-differentiated cells, not significant um, atypical cells, then you can call it a sebacioma. Oftentimes these are transected, so it's probably better in real life to say that it's an atypical sebaceous neoplasm and that you favor a sebacioma, but clinical follow-up is definitely recommended. Um, these often are inflamed too, as in this specimen. So you, um, you will hopefully get a better example on your exam uh, to really show you the holistic entirety of the lesion. But just for definitional purposes, it's a good example of a sebacioma because you have more than 50% of the cells populated by the precursor, uh, more basophilic cell here. Now, contrasting this to this lesion, which is a sebaceous carcinoma. So it's, it's much bigger, um, even at low power, it, it looks somewhat defined, but then there's some areas of ill-defined uh, scatter to the, area, to the edge of the lesion. Um, but it is large, you can appreciate that from this power. And you can see some areas of necrosis too, which usually hint toward a more malignant phenotype here or a more malignant neoplasm. As you go on higher power, you'll start to notice some areas of sebocyte differentiation. So you'll find those vacuoles that kind of make you recognize that it's a sebocyte. Um, but when you go and, and look for mitotic figures on higher power, you're gonna find several scattered mitotic figures. Um, digital slides, sometimes it's a little bit more uh, challenging to identify mitotic figures, but if you scroll around this thing for long enough, you will find some mitotic figures. Um, you'll also find more areas of necrosis, again, um, in and amongst areas that look like uh, more well-differentiated sebocytes. And as you scroll through the lesion, you'll find um, just kind of a mix of a basophilic population, well-differentiated sebocytes, and uh, the cells are more pleomorphic in general. So you can see more mitotic figures here that I'm circling. So um, the important teaching point, often they're ulcerated as well. So the important teaching point is that you're going to find a large mass typically with well differentiated, a mix of well differentiated sebocytes, poorly differentiated sebocytes, um, basophilic precursor population, scattered mitotic figures, areas of necrosis, that should all make you um, very concerned for a sebaceous carcinoma. Just another example of a sebaceous carcinoma. Again, a pretty broad lesion. As you go in on higher power, you'll notice some areas of cells with vacuolation. Um, you'll find mitotic figures. You'll find some areas of necrosis. And again, this is just another example of a sebaceous carcinoma. So you can contrast that to the sebaceous hyperplasia all the way through the adenoma, the sebacioma, and then ending with the sebaceous carcinoma. That's kind of the main spectrum of sebaceous lesions that you should be able to identify um, before taking your exam. It's helpful to look at as many examples as you can. Another important uh, point about sebaceous carcinoma is they're not always this big, so they could um, show these similar changes, but more on a superficial level where you're just looking at it tracking along the epidermis. Uh, what are some of the key stains for sebaceous neoplasms? If you had a bunch of blue cells and you weren't entirely sure, is it sebaceous derived or not, but you did find some scattered sebocyte looking cells, you would want to do an adipofilin for sure. Um, androgen receptors sometimes can highlight these pretty well. There was a recent paper showing that PRAIM, which is well known for being highly expressed in malignant melanocytic neoplasms, is actually a very good uh, sebaceous neoplasm marker too, because PRAIM is highly detectable in normal sebaceous glands, um, but it's been shown to be just as good as adipophilin as far as marking uh, adipocyte, uh, sorry, um, sebaceous neoplasms. So adipophilin 
and uh, Prame are actually kind of on par with each other in terms of its uh, usage or, or its applicability. In terms of its usage, though, adipophilin is much more commonly used and would be the one, the right answer on the exam for sure. All right, so that concludes our examples of the sebaceous neoplasms for this video.